This episode is brought to you by the Shop One in Five Pledge. We believe that when you purchase from a small online or offline business, your dollar goes further. Hey friends, Mina and I created the Shop One in Five Pledge, and we're inviting you to take it with us. It's a commitment to make one in five of your purchases from a small business online or offline. It's a way to make an impact together where and when it matters most. Because the truth is, your purchasing power matters now more than ever. Head to shop one in five.com to take the pledge. Make that commitment to shop one in five of your purchases towards a small business. We also invite you to shop the directory if you don't know where to find other small businesses. It's right there on the page. And we're asking for you to share the pledge. Imagine if each of us told three to four people about the Shop One in Five pledge. It would be an incredible and life changing for so many small businesses. Tell your friends, your family, and your social network. It costs nothing extra and makes a world of difference. Our purchases have the ability to change lives. Okay, let's jump in. Welcome to the Product Boss Podcast, where we help product-based businesses grow their sales and improve their strategies. Hey, everyone. I want to introduce you to my co-host and biz bestie, Mina Kunlo-Sita, an Amazon guru that has built a multi-six-figure product-based business. In introducing the other half of the product boss, Jacqueline Snyder. She has helped launch and grow over 500 fashion apparel and accessory brands, even one of her own. And together, we share our inventory of secret weapons that will help you dig deep and do the work it takes. Are you ready? Let's build together. Hey, product bosses. Did you know that every Wednesday, we have a live talk show called Bosses and Breakfast, where we chat business, mindset, mom life, and everything in between. It's a really fun time and it feels like a conversation amongst friends. In fact, sometimes we have conversations that we don't necessarily know that they're going to lead to where they lead, but we get such an amazing reaction from our listeners and from our community and from our students that we actually wanted to bring it to you to hear today. Yes. Our favorite thing about Bosses and Breakfast is that we get to get together, we get to laugh, we get to be inspired, about what's happening, and we get to check in with you and re-motivate you on why you're working so hard. So join us next time. We'd love to see you there. And here's that snippet from one of our shows that got tons of positive response, where we all walked away feeling more inspired and motivated for the week. So let's jump in. Today, Mm -hmm. we want to talk to you about entrepreneurial math, right? So adding Mm -hmm. versus multiplying revenue. So we were inspired by an excerpt from a book that Mina's reading, and she's going to read that to all of you. And then what we want to do is we want to kind of like take this concept and switch it around for all of you to think about your businesses. So I think we were talking, we were super inspired by it, and we wanted to share it with you as well. Yeah, it really lit a fire under me reading it because it really re-inspired how I thought about things. And it kind of confirmed for me why I think about money and uh, numbers in this way. And I was like, oh, that's why, because this is the way of the entrepreneurs. So I'm reading Miracle Morning, but it's the millionaire's version. It's by Hal Elrod. Um, actually, it's by a different guy, Dave David Osborne and co-written by Hal Elrod. He, this is huge. He also has a documentary on Netflix. I've always been a big believer in Miracle Morning and always been the struggle bus of implementing it. Like, struggle bus, but I respect it a lot. I think that once you get control of your mornings, you do really, um, you know, get back a lot of your time. So Miracle Morning is a book that's crazy popular and it's by Hal Elrod. He does different versions. There's parent ones, ones for children, ones for entrepreneurs. This one is for millionaires. So I'm reading this one currently because my whole life is like always going back to this. I feel like every time school starts. So I read this and I was like, oh my gosh, this is so true. So I wanted to read this to you. So the name Um, of the book, um, Christine, is Miracle Morning. But this one is actually Miracle Morning Millionaires. Uh, Millionaires have resources too. They have time, money, energy, and assets just like everyone else. But they see things differently. The non-wealthy think, if I can keep adding to my savings account, maybe I'll increase my wealth. If I just add more hours to my day, maybe I can get more done. And if I put in more time at work, maybe I can earn more. 
All these things are all true, but only to a limited extent where most people see the world as additive. You put more in, you get a proportionate amount out. The wealthy see, and the entrepreneurs will say, see the world differently. They know that addition, adding more time to a day or more money to an account is just that, it's adding. Millionaires don't like adding. They like multiplying. They like leverage. They want their investments of time, energy, money, and other assets to increase exponentially and not in a straight line. So really good, right? So it's just a different way that people think when they are entrepreneurs because entrepreneurs have this need for freedom. They have this need to make money. They have this need to make something from scratch and make it into something bigger. And oftentimes that cannot happen in a straight line. And it happens not by the old way of thinking, add this, do more of this, add this, save this, put into account, work more hours, get promotions. It doesn't work that way. It works by multiplying and leveraging the time, money, and energy you're putting in. So we wanted to flip this around a little bit. And that's why we were saying entrepreneurial math, adding versus multiplying your revenue. And we wanted to just talk about that a little bit and and take this idea and flip it around and kind of apply it to you as product-based businesses, right? So how many people resonated with what Mina just read? You could leave it in the comments. You know, that idea of if only I had more time, if only I added to my savings, right? That energy part where you're thinking, if only I did this versus the idea of multiplication. Mm -hmm. So let's start with the first idea of adding to my savings. If only I could add more to my savings, I'd be wealthier. I think that this is a little bit of the same idea of your businesses, right? If only I added more products to my business, I could sell more. If Mm -hmm. only I added more customers to this one sales channel, I could sell more. So it's the idea of like, let's say you're selling on Etsy, you're selling on your website, right? And you're thinking, hey, or you're selling through Instagram. You're like, I need you know, a hundred more followers and I can sell more. I need, Mm -hmm. you know, three more sales off of my website and I'll make more money. I need more products. And if I have more products, I'm going to sell more. Now I want to flip that idea for all of you and think about this in the way of, of, okay. So yes, you can add more customers, but it's slower, right? It takes more energy. It takes more effort to get people to your one sales platform, which is why, for example, in Multistream Machine, we we teach more platforms for more profit because think about this. And we have tons and tons of case studies like this. You have one sales channel. You know what your best seller is. You know what you're focusing on. Okay. And then you're like, okay, I'm selling it here. So I'm just going to go all the way back to a few years ago uh, uh, because it's always in my head, Sarah of Heartland Lettering. She was doing about $2,000 a month on Etsy, selling tumblers and and customized products. Now, what she did is she didn't try and add more. Well, she did before she started working with us, but she didn't try and add more to Etsy to try and sell more, right? Because the customer... But she did have a lot of product listings. Etsy... Their way is more is more. Like, you know, you put multiple listings everywhere. You have one listing and it has 50 different versions, you know, that sort of thing. So they really push more is more, you know. But the idea there is like, okay, that's what they're pushing. So, but she was making two grand. Wouldn't she, when she went through a multi-stream machine, for example, and she went through figuring out what her best seller is, she was able to take that product and multiply her revenue versus just add. So she then started making, she added, let's call it Amazon as a sales channel. And then she literally multiplied, she doubled her revenue. It wasn't like I'm gonna add another $500. It was now making 2000 on one platform and 2000 on another platform. So it wasn't like I need to add a few more orders. 2X. She 2X, yeah, two times. Mm -hmm. Thank you, that's the multiplying. (laughs) (laughs) I think Lauren, can you confirm? Just kidding. (laughs) Two plus two equals now. Um, so, so that's the idea here, right? And that's what, where we're seeing this. It's like, yes, totally multiplication. So, and also multiplying the, the eyeballs, the, the consumers that yeah. see your product because now you've multiplied. You haven't just tried to keep adding to the one platform. So that's how I feel like you can take that idea of adding your savings versus multiplication or adding to your revenue versus multiplying your revenue quicker. Yeah. Less time, less effort. 
Right. Multiplying requires you to like expand exponentially, right? Mm -hmm. You're expanding this way instead of going straight. Well, when you're just focusing on, let's say, let's just stick with this Etsy version, right? If if Sarah had stayed on Etsy, she would have straight path it through Etsy. She would have been only focused on Etsy, Etsy's algorithm. What if Etsy's been really slow this summer? What do I do? You know, all these different things. And she's solely in the Etsy world, right? But then what she did was she broadened. She broadened and diversified by multiplying into another revenue stream. So now she's on Amazon. Guess what happened? She got more eyeballs, more traffic. She didn't add on more products. It really was about the eyes and the traffic, right? Mm -hmm. The, The new customers. So it really was about multiplying the possibilities, the opportunities that happen instead of being in a straight line, it's just being more, you know, broadening it out for her. I'll give you another example, not an Amazon example and not an Etsy example. Greg, who is here, right? And we won't say what he said before so we don't get shut down again on Instagram. (laughs) (laughs) But Greg of Lodestone Candles, right? He's also... I think he's he's also a student in multi stream machine. He's also yep, a masterminder, yeah. and he has a candle company. Beautiful candles. So please go check out Lodestone Candles. Now, Greg has his own website, so that's one platform. But he also has been able to lean into wholesale, right? Greg, correct me if I'm telling your story wrong, since you're live with us. But so he has multiplied. So so it's not one store he was able to get more stores and they order in bulk. So it's multiplying the products, like the amount of products that he's selling to more people. And remember, each store has its own customer base. So think about that in terms of multiplication versus addition. He's like, Mm -hmm. so far, so great. Okay, perfect. Now, same with his... So he's got his website and he's trying to acquire customers there. He shows up on Instagram. You know, it's like, it's it's on your single platform, it's addition. Can I get these people in? Can I get these people in? But then when you add a secondary platform, a secondary sales channel, so wholesale, now he can say, okay, like, you know, X amount of my percentage of my business comes from this sales channel and this sales channel. And then mm-hmm. he has other opportunities as well that start to come in. So that's just another example of Greg, who has also gone from being a five-figure business to a six-figure business by multiplying his sales channels. And it doesn't mean that it's more effort necessarily, right? It's it's mm-hmm. the idea because he doesn't have to go sell to all the people that walk into all the retail shops. They're selling for him. He just needs to sell to the the buyers and right. then they'll do the selling. And he does a great job of staying volume, connected volume. with them. Yeah. yeah. So the next one I wanted to get into because it's the next, you know, kind of money fallacy is if I just add more hours to my day, maybe I can get more done. Anyone else? This is a big trap that people fall into. And it's because we are born a lot of times and raised to believe that hard work is the way. I do believe hard work is is crucial. I think that you need to get the experience under you. You need to figure it out. You need to fail very quickly. You need to make mistakes. And a lot of times that has to do with hard work, but the hard work isn't the way forever right? You can't keep adding. You can't just brute force your way through entrepreneurship. You have to figure out how to work smarter. So if it's adding more to your day, thinking that if I just work an extra hour or another two hours or another three hours, that's how I make more money. It becomes impossible. You get overwhelmed because you still only get 24 hours in a day, just like everybody else in the world, Mm -hmm. right? Hey, Mina, quick question. How many times have you heard stories from product bosses that waited until the week before Black Friday to even think about their holiday promotion plans? More times than I can even count. Okay, well, not this year. Successful product bosses know that the key to seeing a snowball of sales throughout the holiday is preparing their promotions now. And that's exactly what we're going to do together during our five-day challenge, which kicks off September 13th. Have you ever wondered if a free training is really worth it? We're not judging here, I swear. We know that there's so much information out there that it's hard to tell what's actually going to move the needle in your business. But here's the thing. The Rock Your Holiday Promotions Challenge is 100% worth your time and energy because it actually creates results in your business. And that's not just us humble bragging. It's proof from our previous challenge participants who have shown up gone through the action items and have seen some big payoffs, literally, like Ashley of Ever After Baby. Ashley said, planning ahead for the holidays for Rock Your Holiday Promotions has helped change how I plan promotions all year long. 
right? Wow. When she first joined the Rock Your Holidays Challenge, she felt like she never knew how to go about setting up her promotions for the holiday season. So she attended the challenge, went through each day's training, and implemented the action steps. Not only did she have her promotions organized by the end of the challenge, she actually tripled her sales from the previous holiday season using what she learned inside the challenge. She then went on to join Multistream Machine, got her bestsellers onto Amazon, and grew her revenue even more while growing her Facebook following 10 times and her email list by four times. Wow. Okay. So you must be thinking, what does this have to do with you, friend? Well, it's just a preview of what you could do in just five days when you participate in the Rock Your Holiday Promotions Challenge. Okay, so we start on Monday, September 13th. It is totally free. You can go sign up at rockyourholidaypromotions.com or just click the link in the show notes and we will see you inside. So the idea there, then there with, with time and hours is, well, and then someone just messaged, uh, messaged here. Janice said that she's afraid of adding another channel because she'll get buried in orders. Please come to the workshop series, Janice, or if you haven't watched them, because yesterday about scaling handmade was something to help you overcome that fear of feeling like if I get too many orders, I won't be able to keep up, which sometimes yeah. keeps us stuck. So the idea here of, of time, if I worked harder, listen, Mina and I hustle when we need to hustle. Mm -hmm. We work hard when we need to work hard. Um, Our team was with us in DC and we were like, yeah, we can keep working till midnight, right? When there's times (laughs) that we have to do it, we'll do it. But then there's, it's, it's not sustainable. It's not something you can do all the time. And all of you know that like, let's say you have 30 minutes to do something and you need to do it quick. Sometimes you can get a lot of work done in 30 minutes as well in less time. So how would you say that we can, we can also talk about this for product-based businesses? I think they need to up-level their thinking. So a lot of times people think that, you know, if I simply work harder and a lot of it's, it is, you know, how we grew up, but a lot of times it's, you have to let go of that. You have to do it by yourself. Right. And so if you're going to be adding more hours, well, way to multiply more hours is by delegating it to somebody else to do it instead of you. That's a way of working smarter is that I know that somebody else can do this instead of me, or I know that somebody else can do it better than I can, you know? And I also can know that I employ other people that might be able to do this that never would be employed before for fine arts or, you know, doing a trade or creating pottery or pouring candles or a mom that's usually staying at home. Like my mother-in-law, I gave the story yesterday in the workshop of how she used to cut lace. Well, she left her abusive husband and had four kids to raise, but she was able to do it because she was able to cut lace. Somebody offered her the opportunity, right? So it's in the entrepreneurial blood to figure it out. And a lot of times we think we have to figure it out ourselves and do it ourselves, but that simply is not true. Mm -hmm. So it's the idea of multiplying your efforts, right? Multiplying that. And so a lot of you might be like, but I can't afford to hire anyone. That's okay. Right. Mm -hmm. As you're growing your business, there's the initial thing where you start is that you need to multiply your revenue, which is really why so many people at the stage that some of you might be in join multi stream machine because they're like, okay, I need more money. I need to one save Mm -hmm. money and work on my systems, which we help you there. And then I need to make more money. Yeah. So that you feel like you're so that you can pay yourself, that you can take I love that you brought that up because a lot of the things that we go over in multi stream machine have a bit to do with automation, like emails, right? The three emails we go through, you automate the automated emails and then you have your ones that are ongoing. There's also automated things when it comes to knowing about shipping, right? Where your order's coming from. So you're not running around with your head cut off thinking that, okay, you don't, you can do it with no system or no workflow when the workflow is really the thing that will save you time. So you're able to work on things that are better, that better move the needle forward for your business. Mm -hmm. So as you get there, right, as you start to increase your revenue, you multiply your revenue and then you start to think, okay, like exactly like one of the people on Facebook said where she was like, I can't, um, I don't want to grow because I can't keep up with it, right? When you get to that tipping point, that's usually where you hire. And we talk about this, a lot of our multi-stream machine students are live with us right now. A lot of our masterminders are live with us, but they're talking about, yeah, when I hired a team member, we usually say that you would hire either someone to help you with production or someone to help you with shipping. Those are two things that are repeatable processes that you can teach. And now listen, come to the workshop, workshops, watch the replay on the scaling your handmade 
or product-based business because that's, we really dig into this. Mm -hmm. So that's... And and, and sometimes you don't even hire on, you outsource, Mm -hmm. right? So it could be a, um, for example, um, Dome Doc, we gave the example of them, they outsource their production. So they're not doing in-house, but they did have a warehouse where they do their own shipping. Other people outsource their shipping. For example, um, Jana of Synthesia Tarot, she yeah, right. um, outsources her shipping to a fulfillment company. Yeah, her um, tarot cards. And so that really has alleviated some of her time too. So when you get to that tipping point, it doesn't always mean you have to hire a team member. It means that you have to get some stuff off your plate. Mm -hmm. So here's a couple examples, right? Charlene on Facebook says, but I hate paperwork. Can I hire someone to do all the paperwork and data entry? 100%. Absolutely. So that's something that I hired very quickly in my business uh, when I first started was a bookkeeper because I would spend an entire day invoicing. And when you sell wholesale, for example, and let's say you're not using a, a platform for that, but like rather you're... <laughs> this is good. I got faxed orders, fax purchase orders. So like <laughs> they would just come in through so the fax, fax machine. So a fax machine is a machine that used to exist. It somehow works. I don't know, <laughs> you know how... It's incredible. How it makes this through sound wires. through the phone line, <laughs> For a young listener. phone line. No. Yeah. So it's too much for the brains right now. <laughs> never, still never figured it out. I could look it up in an encyclopedia maybe. No. Um, okay. So, so the fax machine, I would just get orders in and then I would actually have to input those orders into my QuickBooks. I'd have to create a, you know, I'd have to create a purchase order. I'd have to create a packing slip. I'd have to create a invoice. So eventually I hired somebody once a week to come in and do bookkeeping for a couple hours. How much is that? You know, $150 an a week, maybe if it's $50 an hour type person, but they can do it faster. They can do it better. They can do it correct. If it takes me an entire day and takes someone $3, I would pay that $150 to get someone to help me with that. Oakland Tico, Peggy, who is also, a, is she a student? I think she might be a student. She's a mastermind for sure. Oakland Tico, let me know if you're an MSM student. She's really smart because here's something that a lot of us adopted in 2020. She said, I started having groceries delivered and laundry done by somebody else. Didn't have to hire someone. I love if you it. have Instacart, which I do, it tells you after you place your orders how I many ordered hours crab legs the other day from Aldi. <laughs> for you. Yeah, she's a multi stream machine student, Peggy. She's a game changer. So to, um, so I've saved, I don't know, over 200 hours of shopping groceries and probably let's multiply that for me because it takes me a long time to make decisions sometimes. <laughs> so, I'll, so maybe the average shopper versus me standing in front of the two tea boxes being like, mint? Which mint do I want? So, but it's, it saved me 200 hours. What is your time worth? Right. So for those of you that are like, I can't hire for my business yet, or those of you that work a full-time job and then you come home and you're trying to cram in that time for, for your business, right? What can you outsource? The world changed last year in 2020. There are so many more things that were never accessible before that you can actually get for a very small fee. Uber Eats. People are not going back Mm to, so even like elderly people, even Jacqueline's grandma, is having her groceries delivered. Now, is she going back to getting her groceries not delivered? No, now that she's figured out the the new, new way of life and adapted, she's not going back, right? Yeah. So people have crossed over to this new way of life and they're not going back. Y- yeah, I mean, Target pickup. Mina's always like sitting in the parking lot waiting <laughs> <laughs> well, you can order <laughs> multiple times if you need to bring things to her car. You know why that saves time again. Any of us that have been into Target lately, I mean, mm-hmm. I don't drink my coffee anymore because I wear a mask inside, but which really actually dampers the whole wanting <laughs> to go to Target and walk around with a coffee. To be honest, for honest, but think about that. Think about how much time you then get sucked in. Maybe you went in for groceries, or maybe mm-hmm. you went in to pick up school supplies, and all of a sudden you're like, "Well, I got to walk all the aisles. I got to add everything." So yeah. So if you, if all of you were trying to think about how do I have more time, we said that quote like even Beyonce only has you know the same twenty four hours. hours. Yeah, yeah, in a day. But she's multiplied her efforts by having other people help her do things. And that is... My grandma's in her mid 80s. So she's a younger grandma, but she's English. And it's still like when you talk to her on FaceTime, it's only like this portion of her face. So that's why it's like... <laughs> it's a big deal. Okay. Like, I don't know if she could see herself. So that's why I'm like she could use Instacart because like I like talk to her and it's always like 
part of her face where she's like, can you see my dog? And it's like her couch. Her uh, dog's nowhere in the picture. <laughs> yeah. So my mother-in-law is, she's young. She's only 61. And my kids were teaching her how to floss the other day. So, I mean, change. It's incredible, right? Seeing all the different generations. Yeah. Um, okay. But this last one I think is really important too. And this is the mindset of if I put in more time at work, maybe I can earn more. If I put in more time at work, maybe I can earn more. And this really, I think, is the the idea that you have to put in a whole bunch of time before you get to do something. When you really, you, that? you can shortcut it. You can shortcut it by hiring the right people, hiring the coaches. You can learn from digital courses. We were just talking about the fax machine, right? I mean, technology has changed. Kids don't even know what that is anymore. So what a dial tone is. They they don't, right? (laughs) So they don't even, we were just talking about the dot matrix printer the other day, another blast from the past. We were telling our team members, it used to fold into itself when it would be like, remember the paper that had the holes on the sides for those of you that are our age and above. (laughs) So we're Xenia's where it's like we're analog growing up, but digital now. Mm -hmm. So lots of things have changed. You can shortcut a lot of things and access has changed. So I want to read another um, excerpt that I think is really, really important, especially for entrepreneurs, because we go through this in our... um, our day five of Rocker Holiday Promotions. And we always say that our, the entrepreneurs we know are voracious learners, voracious learners. And it's something that I really pride myself on is the constant learning. So here's the excerpt. Learning is the master multiplier. Everything you learn, you get to apply over and over again. It's like having a single dollar and getting to spend it time and time again. Learning is the golden goose of life. And as long as you nurture it, it will continue to pay dividends. So I want you to remember that you get to pay for self-education. You get to pay to shortcut your way to whoever. Our masterminders are paying to work with us so we can shortcut their decision-making when it comes to making really big decisions in their business. And I need you to all think about that, that it's not about the time that you put in that makes you earn more. It's about how can you, as an entrepreneur, shortcut that for yourself so you can get further, faster, and with a bunch of people that you're having fun with. Mm -hmm. Does that resonate for all of you? Because think about it. I mean, Mina's reading this book and it's multi like the the little the gems it's a section of this humongous book and mm-hmm. think about all of our minds being blown right now right think about how we can apply certain thoughts here so that's the idea with courses that's the idea with you listening to the podcast or other podcasts that's the idea of investing in yourself joining a mastermind getting a coach having a group of people to turn on turn to we always said when we went to events you know back in as you know, um, Erica says the 1900s, <laughs> whatever year it was. <laughs> but back when we, you know, went to events, we used to say because we would actually invest a lot of money for certain events, like two, three thousand dollars. We still do for digital events. We were like, if we pull one gem, and actually, let's multiply that because there's two of us. So whenever the two <laughs> of us would go to stuff, we'd have to pay double. But mm. we were like, if we pull one gem, if we meet one person. Right. Yeah. And we've seen that time and time again of that has that has changed our business. Like yeah. full, fully, full, fold. Some of the best investments we've ever made have been in courses, have been in coaches, have been in events. And right. then also the investment of time and like listening to things like podcasts. Right. Because you can only, you're adding to yourself. You're only adding to yourself one person when you're learning just in a bubble. You only have exposure to yourself. The things that you know, you're limited by, you know what you know, and you don't know what you don't know. But when you shortcut your way with experts, courses, access to education, you're learning, you take advantage of free workshops and free challenges, you exponentially multiply what you know and what you can apply. Mm -hmm. because you've done it through other people and what they've learned. So think about that, right? That's why people get wealthier. That's why people get um, smarter. That's why people become happier is because they've exponentially grown what they know about themselves and what they know about the world and how they, their perception of that is how they apply it in, in real life. So how is that? Does that resonate with all of you? Do you feel that? I, I love that. Um, Someone on Instagram said, love it. Starting the grocery now, we don't have to, we don't have delivery, but they have pickup here, right? And they're going to try that. So even think about that. That's just saved her two, 
two hours, you know, like maybe there's the drive time, but I don't know. Again, two hours is me in a grocery store. So let's say 45 minutes or an hour for an average human. I don't know. But that's the idea. Like where can you save that time? Where can you multiply your efforts? Where can you invest? It's not the adding to your bank account in like the small dollars. We want you to get into this millionaire mindset of multiplication versus addition. Well, friends, I hope you had as much fun as we did. If you want to hang out with us live, join us every Wednesday at 11 a.m. Eastern over at our Facebook page or Instagram. And if you want to hear the whole show, click on the link in our show notes and we'll see you over there. Thank you for being here and listening all the way through the Product Boss Podcast. If you love our show and it has helped you in any way in your business, would you mind doing two things for us? Subscribe to the show so you never miss an episode and leave us a review. Reviews help other product entrepreneurs know that this is the place to be to grow their businesses and realize that they're not alone. And we know that you all know that a five-star and honest review helps you sell more products to more people. So you know that your reviews help us reach more listeners around the world. Remember, what we give is what we receive, and we are all about helping each other in the Product Boss community. We are all in this together. We would be so appreciative of you if you could take the time right now to subscribe, leave a review, and even share this episode on social or someone you know so we can impact more lives. And remember, subscribing means that you will get notified each time we release a new episode so you never miss a thing. You have helped us grow and climb into the top 10 of all marketing podcasts, and together we can keep climbing. Thank you, friends. And remember, there is room at the top for all of us. This episode is brought to you by the shop one in five pledge. We believe that when you purchase from a small online or offline business, your dollar goes further. Hey friends, Mina and I created the shop one in five pledge, and we're inviting you to take the pledge with us. It's a commitment to make one in five of your purchases from a small business online or offline. It's a way to make an impact together where and when it matters most, because the truth is your purchasing power matters now more than ever. We're inviting you to take the pledge. If you head to shop one in five.com, the link is in the show notes. And when you get there, please make sure to share the pledge with your friends, your family, and your customers. Let's invite everyone to take the shop one in five pledge so that we can all use our purchasing power to change lives.